Everyone, you may want to get down. I'm not going to use the mic, so you may want to get down closer. Like, if, you know, feel free to sit at the back. I'm not too fast. That's what I do in lectures anyway. Okay. So, this is kind of an ambiguous one here. We, no, I know Joke like planned this two days ago. Um, I was lucky enough to have Chris come on board yesterday. Okay, so my name's Nathan. I've been an IT technician for two years now. Um, started off actually pretty... Um, oh, can't remember the word for it now. Oh, pretty low on the ladder. I was doing a diploma in IT and I started off working in their library helping them. Then I started fixing computers at a computer store and now I work for sort of an IT company who generally do maintenance contracts for medical centres. But I'm also a Monash University um, student. So anyone here actually want to be an IT technician at all? Yes. Okay, sweet. And who's here for the I want to pull computer park of them a gamer kind of person as well? Yeah, I thought that would be more popular. So I'm going to represent most of the IT technician aside. Um, whenever Chris wants to, he can pipe up with the more gamer specific stuff because even though when StarCraft 2 came out and I did spend two grand on the computer just for that one game, I am mostly a console gamer. But I know, one of, the, one of those dirty console gamers. <laughs> We're terrible people. <laughs> okay, so from the IT technician side of view, point of view, um, this beast here is way more sexy than what you're going to work with. Seriously, if you do if you do IT sort of as a business thing, and you that they don't want that because they want cheap, small something that's not going to cost them an arm leg to replace. Kind of high, yeah. See so you. As, as, as an IT technician, you've got two mo faults you're going to mostly fix. You're going to fix the internet, which is, you would not believe how people refer to it as the internet, and make people, people's computers boot again. Because no matter, oh, you would not believe how many times I've had to say that. It, no, it's, te it's terrible. It's been IT too, no? Respect her. Yeah, everyone's seen yeah. that. You get an IT, and it's basically... I have to go set up tomorrow. Patrick, I have to go set up computers. That's where I'm going to put my boss in there and set up at all. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It comes from the power supply and then you run it through here. I'm seeing my finger through. And they come up and then they come through these different holes here. So what? basically that's how you set up your cable management for good airflow. Turn it back. Not getting squeaky. Yeah. So yeah, that's how you can see. So it improves your airflow if you look in front here. Or you just minimal amount of cables you can see here. So most of these cases that have good cable management will have these back in the back. You'll see these have a bit of room as well with all these patterns on here. So it's actually pressed out so you can put your cables yeah. behind there nice and neat. Yep. Also, you got better places to mount your hard drive. Like you'll see in here on this computer, that's terrible. Like that managing stuff through there. On that computer, you can't even pull the, the back, the the the, 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 the right side of it off. That's like riveted in. So you've got to actually pull out like a. There's like generally a little thing there where the hard drive drive goes in this one, and it's a joke. So. Any questions so far? Like we've got an, we've got an hour here to burn, so anyone's got a question, I'm willing to do my best to answer it. Yep. Um, how do you set your graphics card from um, tipping like other ones? Does it have massive? Yeah, normally it's okay. I mean, there's not much play in that at all. No, it's fine. Put it that way. It's usually screwed. That's fine. Um, that that that'll be. They, like they don't, sometimes they don't look too silly, but seriously, how they clip in there, like here's at the back of it, there's little, little prongs to clip in, and then once it clip, you trust me, it's fine. Yeah. 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 The case by itself, like 150, 160 or so. Is that, so that's without a power supply? Yeah, that's without a power supply, but it comes with your top fan, as you can see here. As well as the top comes off, as well as the front comes off as well. And then there's an air filter on the front here that you can remove. It's a bit dusty. You can clean it off. Yeah. And something else as an IT technician you'll find a lot is dusty fans and heat sinks. I no joke. One com one computer I pulled apart had a it was overheating, right? And I'm like, okay, have a look at have a look at the heat sink on it had dirt that thick. It was ridiculous. My boss found a dead frog in one computer. We don't even know how it got in there. <laughs> Actually, we had one, one computer we'll get, me and my mate had, and we decided to manually overclock it by soldering, soldering pins together on the um, CPU. Did, suffice it to say, it didn't go too good. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, let's get let's start really pulling this puppy apart. Uh, I'll smug life. Okay, so first thing first, RAM. So yeah, that's basic basic information about there. Short term memory. When you turn the computer off, it gets cleared. Um, no moving parts, but still finds a way to damage itself. Yep. Uh, do you know when DDR4 is coming out? I actually have no idea. Um, I don't know. Like the the thing about RAM is these days. Is it doesn't it's, need much. Yeah, it doesn't need much. And yeah. when I get the hard drive, I'll make, I'll make a point with, because you've got SSDs, yeah. about RAM. But, so... At yeah, one point about RAM, if you guys are making um, gaming computers especially, is you only need 8 gig. You can even get away with 4 gig easily. Mm. I've got lots of friends who want 16, 32, even 64 gig. <laughs> yes. But you don't, you don't yeah. need that. <laughs> So RAM, RAM, as long as you've got DDR3 RAM, it really doesn't matter. Same yeah. as graphics cards. The more, more amount of memory in your graphics card really doesn't mean much. It's all yeah. about the cost. Do you know about RAM disks? Like virtual hard drives that are stored on your RAM? Virtual, virtual hard drives stored on your RAM. Are you, it's like are you, are you, are you talking about where you, where you store like a game on a USB and then use it as virtual RAM? It'll work about the same as an SSD. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, that. Mm. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I don't... Actually, I, don't, I know a person who did um, um, something like that with Minecraft. Because, um, in, I don't know if you, anyone guys use Linux here, but you can... That, that's that been like... Yeah. That's like being native for ages. So, yeah, um, do you want to pull out the round and give them a look what it looks like? And do you want to plug it in so I can do a code now? 
ram in here is uh, is G Skill DDR3 ram with heat sinks on it. It's a bit hard to get out the graphics card. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the RAM is made in the same is made in the same factories as you'll find with a lot of different products these days. But they normally throw their own little unique things on. Obviously, this heatsink is a little bit different compared to others, so you know it can be a bit a bit more effective. But that's one stick of RAM anyway. Can we take both out? Yep. Um, could you get a PC speak hooked up now? Um, I do not know. I oh. didn't put this together. So. Okay, well, we'll find. <laughs> Um, Sanders and the PC speakers, so I can't show you this, but um, one major troubleshooting thing for PCs, Charles, is beep codes. There's some examples. Um, I was going to show you, yeah, but don't have a PC speaker now. Like, if you pull the RAM out of a computer and turn it on, you'll hear beep, it, it changes. You got, you'll see how I've got an example of Amy BIOS ones and IBM BIOS ones. Sadly, there's no real, real standard for it. They just sort of do what they want, which is annoying when you can't figure out what the friggin' mother motherboard is, but whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, they come in handy. Like, when you, when you hear a bit, your computer not turn on, but you hear a whole lot of beeps, note the beeps. They are really, really handy. Yep. Um, I come from a while. It stopped for some... I, don't, I did nothing to it, but mm. it used to be free, and it would start, but it'd take, like, five minutes longer. And then... Um, it, what, at what point of booting does it do that? Um, like, has it done the? Does it do the post and all that first? Do they get to the Windows loading screen or anything? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that sounds. Yes, that's interesting. Computers are curious creatures. You'll, you'll find plenty of times where you, where you have no idea what's going on. I'd like to say Google's your best friend. Um, so yeah, hard disk drive. These things, they like to go all the bloody time. That hopefully as SSDs get get um bigger, that um that'll become less of a problem. Because as you see in this picture here. Got these little discs. They actually, they actually got moving parts. They're basically the only thing other than the fan that really does. Um, <coughs> you see here, that's a, that's an SSD, solid state. So that's basically like a whole lot of um, SD cards compacted into one hard drive. These, these things, not only are amazing, but they're really going to sort of phase out the need to have 32 gig of RAM that some people have for whatever stupid reason. Because the access times on these are impressive. The main, the main reason is these things are spinning. Let's say you stop using your computer and the hard drive's not going. For that thing to get access data, it needs to start spinning the disk and then find on the disk where it is after it's accessed the journaling, the journaling system and all that crap. This thing here goes straight to the journaling system, goes, OK, it's over there, get it down. There's no, there's no issue with um, having to spin the disk to find where it is. Yeah, um, so as you'll see with most grid cases like yep. this one, this one's called the Chaser Mark 1, is that you have these hard disk bays. Basically, if, if it's not an SSD, the hard disk just goes straight in here and, and you can take this out and just shove it in the side so you don't need to screw anything in at all. And all you need to do is just push it in and then just close it and that's it as your hard drive. You take it out, done. <coughs> you just got to plug it in the back and that's it. If you look at our other case that we have, the big one, which is a level 10 GT, you don't even have to plug anything at the back. All the ports are already there, so you just shove it in and take it out. Also, we've got these things like hard disk bays in the top, and if that's pulled out, basically all you have to do is just throw the hard disk in. So if you want to borrow a mate's hard disk, or you want to do a backup of your system if something's broken, you can just throw it straight in there and stuff. Excellent. That's pretty nifty, I like that one. Uh, yep. What SSD would you recommend, personally? 
Uh, well, the G skill range is pretty good. We've got some G skill ones here. These ones are 60 gig. This is a SATA 2. I'd recommend a 120 gig SATA 3. So, uh, sorry, just how do you sell it? So, one, a 120 gig, as in the size. G skill. Just G dot skill. Yep. And then I'd suggest getting like a 120 gig. Yeah, and get a SATA 3. This one's only a SATA 2. SATA 3 is obviously faster. Yep. With yeah, with I mean, with even with even with SATA two, we've got a we've got one PC that only has like DDR two RAM and a quad core, and on a fresh install of Windows with about four games, it restarts in about fifteen seconds for you to be able to use again. And that's only with a SATA two, so a SATA three is going to be slightly faster. Yeah. Question? Um, also, you, you look very like a price oriented hard drive for um, SSD. Check out the. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing of SSD is, you pr you're pretty much not going to find much of an issue with them. They're all, they're as I said, they're solid state. There's no moving parts. You should be fine for the most part. Um, okay. So next, graphics card. Okay. So this one's a good example. You see, there's actually sometimes they're built actually into the motherboard. Like in, in being an IT technician, that is going to be a big thing because no one wants to spend extra money on a, on a graphics card when you actually have it in, in built. Because for a basic computer, um, yeah, you, you don't need any more than basic graphics. It's really when you actually want to play games. You know, not, not, no one plays solitaire in like four dimensions or anything like that. Um, I'm sure this we'll card. This is only a 470. Yep. Go on nostalgic now for the picture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They're obviously brand the computers. They're highly susceptible to heat. Um, again, they kind of they were really good for a while there. Then they sort of got more susceptible to it. Now they're getting better. Then they sort of last a bit longer now. But yeah. Um, they're highly susceptible to voltage. Okay. Yeah, so the CPU we have in here is an i5 2500K. The uh, K series is good for overclocking. It's from Intel. Yeah, because that's um, Gen 2, isn't it? Yep. The, all the Ks. And, uh, and the CPU cooler we have on here is the water 2.0 performer. And basically, that's an all in one water cooling unit. So there's actually liquid inside here and inside the radiator. But unlike the old days of having a bay and having to pull it, you know, put in your own liquid cooling and take it out. And, clean the tubes and stuff like that. This is all just all in one. So basically, you buy this thing, put a bit of paste in your CPU, chuck it on, screw it in, and that's it. It's done. Water cooling. You'll find the water cooling is generally a little bit better than air cooling. This one will provide you a couple of degrees, degrees difference. Yeah. Compared to air cooling as in like an aftermarket cooler. Compared to your stock cooler, depending on what you're running, you can see like 20, 30 degrees difference. Yeah, water, water cooling is so much better. Have done mineral cooling. Uh, mineral oil cooling. No. <laughs> I still want to give that a crack. But yeah. 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 After a while, you do. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's good. Good to have in the future, but also you got to know that a CPU that runs cooler is going to last for longer and be more reliable as well. Like about, you know, around 90, 90 plus degrees in your CPU at any stage can be permanent damage. So I mean, if you're sitting in your, if you're sitting in your room in summer and it's like 40 degrees, imagine how hot your computer's going to be inside. So what I say to people is that if you're not really playing on overclocking, just get a cheap CPU cooler, which is like 30 bucks, and it's good insurance for your, you know, $250 CPU. Make it last a lot longer, and then in the future, you know, you want to bump it up even 500 megahertz, one gig or something, and then it'll work fine. Yeah, o overclocking is really a few. You, 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 if you buy a modern CPU, there's no point doing it now. Keep, keep it in mind because if you want to, you can make a computer last another six months to a year. Um, but when, you, but when you do, and if you said if you do start cranking up the temperature too much, it can do permanent damage. Uh, I'll go with you. Um, with graphics cards, what has a bigger impact on performance? Is it the RAM built in, or is it the speed? It's the clock speed. It really like if you've got a a one gig card compared to a two compared to a three, it basically means zero whatsoever. It's all about the megahertz of the clock speed. 
Yeah, the, the RAM is just what they do is a thing to say I've got more RAM and I'll look cooler. But right, it actually means. Yeah. But it really, well, like, for most people, it means nothing whatsoever. It's all about the clock speed. Because it, it's very, I don't think it's very often they're going to load more than a gig of textures into the memory. Battlefield 3 does. Yeah, that's that's a very rare, that's a big rarity. Like, there is obviously going to be a minimum that you're going to want, but. Yeah, I mean, it depends what the level of games you play, too. I play yeah. Counter Strike Source competitively, and I play on low graphics at 800 by 600, so. Wow. It's the way the game's meant to be played, it's a lot smoother and a lot better to play on this. Yeah, but the human eye doesn't go past 60 frames per second. Well, I'd, well, try have you ever used a 120Hz monitor before? It's a lot of difference, it's a world of difference. I'd never go back to a non-120Hz monitor, ever. Yeah, never. It's ridiculously good, I'd suggest that. Uh, question up there? Um, normally just in the back, you've got, you've got different plugs. Like in here, you can see you've got two DVI plugs. Some some graphics cards, like a lot of ATI ones, are built to have more. Three screens, like iFinity, four, five, six screens. Uh, so you'll have to buy a graphics card that's suited to that. In general, they have a few DVIs and a lot of HDMIs. But basically, just through Windows, when you plug in your second screen, just hit the uh, you know hit the search button for extra screens, and then you can set it up either to display the same thing or have a screen on the side. Yep. So like you were saying before, some do have inbuilt into the motherboard through a lot of the new Intel CPUs have graphics inbuilt, but you could use that. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure you can't use the inbuilt at the same time as the graphics card. Yeah, you. you yeah. yeah. Um. Question here. When you run two cards in SLI, how would you stop? You gotta have good good airflow through your case. Yeah. But it's really hard. If you're running SLI, a lot of the time it suggests to go water cooling so they don't blow the heat onto each other, because obviously heat rises, so the one that's on the bottom is gonna be blowing heat straight onto the one that's above it. So you find your graphics cards get you know, really hot, but you want a good fan, especially at the back, to suck all the air out and at the top to suck the air out as well. But I mean, the way the case works basically is the air comes through the front, it's sucked through the front, and also from underneath the case, and then it goes out the top and the back. Yeah. And so you yeah, also SLA is very hard. You'll find that you might overheat if you're trying to do stuff, yeah. unless you've got good airflow or water cooling or both. And you also want to make sure you've got a good motherboard that doesn't have them too close together, like uh, some. Um, yeah, that's right. I mean, this this one's a mini motherboard. As you can see it's only it's only like down to here. Yeah. So if I'm going to chuck the graphics cards on, which I don't even think it has I'm going to get to ATX later as well, yeah. so the links so. then. Um, actually, before you, you, someone else had their hand up here. You still got a question? Or? No? Okay, go on next again. Basically, like I said, most things are made from the same factory. It's the main unit is exactly the same. This one's about ten dollars cheaper, but the fans that are on it are actually the fans from our Freo CPU core, so they're not the standard factory fans. The OEM ones are actually upgraded fans. So you'll see about two to three degrees difference between the Corsair one to this one. But you can check out reviews. But like I said, it's about ten bucks cheaper. <coughs> and the top model of this, which is a radio with a double fan, actually comes with your uh, own software, so you can tweak it so it up and down the cooling rather than. Most of these, which you actually need to reach in and, and turn your knob to turn your fan yeah, up, open the case. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's an all in one unit, so. So, yeah, it's actually controlled through the unit, the same as the Corsair ones, except, like I said, the top level one comes with comes with some software, so you can just do it through your PC. Yeah, cool, so everyone. Yeah, so, yeah, oh, the next thing, motherboard. As we'll sort of touch, we're starting to touch on there. It's an old school. I think it's 775 by the looks of it. No. Socket. Pretty old school. It's got IDE. Um, yeah. yeah. Going back to my uh, IT technician side of things, worst thing to diagnose ever. You'll find there's tools to check your RAM, there's tools to check your hard drive, but if one, one capacitor or something's gone on that motherboard, it's a bitch to diagnose. Seriously. Uh, they're my least favourite things. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, form factors, as I said before. Um, you've got... Um, motherboards come in all different shapes and sizes. There's like a graphic there, you'll see. Which one's this one, you reckon? 
Yeah, it's, me, it's probably about mini ATX. There, you'll see down the bottom over it, there are others like ITX and I yeah, should it's say it's an ATX. 244 by 244 millimeters. MA, yeah, MA, yeah, mini 24 ATX. by 24 centimeters. Yeah. So it's micro. Oh, micro there. Yeah. Micro ATX, that's yeah. one there. So this is the motherboard that someone actually won the other day from Gigabyte. Oh, really? Yeah, the same one. Oh, okay. Lucky bugger. So, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, but that was two hundred and thirty bucks with the motherboard for three. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> complaint. Yeah. <clears throat> so our next power supplies. Um, then we'll take one. Yeah. Um, you also note that my next slide is the case, but not that one. I think it's the one up on it, maybe. Yeah. Um. Well, I've got. I'm, I'm on to you. I've got, I've got, I've got you back, mate. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Power supplies. They're very under understated. Like. Yep. Pe people go, oh look, there's a cheap PSU, that's great, and it's 350 watts. That's not going to power much. <laughs> yeah, most of people underestimate the power supply and then complain when it blows up their $600 graphics card and send us an angry email. But <laughs> what, what I always do is to say, once again, it's like your CPU cooler, it's good insurance. As you can see, the PSU here is a tough power XT 775 watt, which means that it's, it's, these are bronze rated, they've got different ratings, there's like bronze, silver, gold, platinum. And that means that it works at about 80, 80 to 83 percent efficiency. I think it is. So it's going to put out about 80 to 83 percent of 775 watts most of the time. So what I always say to people is like my computer, for example, is an i7 2700K, a 570, 8 gig of RAM, an SSD, and a hard drive. So that can work fine with 775 watts. But I bought 875 just in case, because in the future you might want to throw another graphics card in. After time, your power supply diminishes and puts out less power as well. So as I said, you don't want to blow up your $600 graphics card just because you saved yourself 50 bucks on the power supply. And you'll note that a lot of power supplies only have like a one-year warranty. They never, they rarely ever go over that, and there's a good reason for that because those, like, they do do they do diminish, and also when they, oh, be careful of them because when they do, if they do blow up, they take out everything: your RAM, your CPU. I've actually got. Yeah, the, the red switch. switch. Actually, I was about to mention that because I'll show you there. Because what that does, most a lot of modern ones don't have them. Yeah, a lot of cheaper, cheaper ones do. Yeah, a lot of cheaper ones do because um, you know that one, they will take ones up there. Like, yeah, no, they're the professional ones. Um, no, because they they switch it from 240 volts to 110. One time I decided to see what would happen if I switched to 110. I did that too. Yeah, um, I did too. Actually, wait, wait wrong way. That CPU, that's why I actually put it up there. And actually what happened was the power supply blew up, some flames came out of the side, and that thing melted to the frigging motherboard. No joke, no joke. You see, see that edge of the crack along about there, I'd say? That, that little corner, I couldn't get out. I managed to like force that out, but yeah, it cracked, and, it and I was like, wow. I did not expect that to happen. L luckily I had like, like, proper boards and shit to make sure it didn't surge because I wanted, I wanted to be extra sure but yeah I did not expect that to happen and you've had your hand out for a while what's up yep mm. oh jeez Yeah, you spent five hundred dollars on a PSU. Yeah, it's, yeah. And you spent five hundred dollars on a PSU. I spent a thousand dollars upgrading that. Spent another lot. Yeah, but five hundred dollars that should get you like breakdown. Well, we'll move. We'll move. We'll move on. Anyhow, next, the case. Do you recognise it? Do you? <laughs> I think, I, I think I saw this one. Did you have this one here yesterday? Yeah, it's here now. Uh, it's yeah, I thought, I thought Mike, oh, that one looks familiar. Yeah. 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 As I was saying before, sometimes more than a pretty face. Seriously. That being able to put your hard drive without proper cable management, 
like you won't you won't get it in the field much, but for your home can PC, which will pull. Cheers, Jack. For for like a home PC, that you're going to pull apart a lot. These things are amazing, and if you can actually suggest it to a customer who's got more money than cents, also do that, because when you need to fix it or whatever, it saves so much time. It is your best friend. So that's really all the basics. Yeah, said not much, right? Um, so yeah, if you haven't started pulling the computers apart, now's an excellent time to start. Like seriously, um, you can buy you can buy cheap computers for $160, like just crappy second-hand ones. Pull them apart and murder them. It's okay, they'll get over it. They're $160. You'll you'll there's no real good courses on going and taking apart computers. Well, that I know of. Yeah, they they're amazing. I, I learned a lot of things like that. Yeah, they will. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, <coughs> also, okay, so yeah, I was saying, Google, it's your friend as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, they don't even joke about Bing. Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo. Ask you. <laughs> Alta Vista. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ask, ask, I hate, because now they put toolbars in everyone's computers, and they're wondering why Internet Explorer 7 is going really slow. Oh, really? Yeah, no, it's because you're A, rank Internet Explorer 7, and B, you've got 48 toolbars. Why do you need the buddy toolbar? Who uses emoticons anymore? Like, actual graphic ones. Just smile. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, the pad clip. Um, so, yeah, you had your hand up quickly? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of, because every idiot uses Explorer, a lot of companies build their web, their web, so, web applications around them. It's good for office machines because it comes with IE and that's what they get used to using. Yeah. They don't have to install anything else. It defaults up because no one's smart enough to move on. He said the home page to crash IE. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so just my sources quickly. Um, beat codes, found them on Google. Just Google it. Um, any picture I didn't, I didn't take for myself was from Wikipedia, except for the ones of the Thermaltake case and the Thermaltake PSU. Got it from the Thermaltake site. Um, also, just for a bit of a joke, my laptop died midway through last semester. Um, <laughs> Jack knows what's going on, and. Basically what happened was I had to get a computer really quickly and I got a really crappy laptop from out the back that um, some kid had broken but it was like a Core i5 4 gig and it kept overheating. So, this is my current computer. You can get to this one. <laughs> Starcraft 2. Yeah!